Hello, Christian Livingstone here, and uh, I have a little project that may be helpful to uh, many beyond me, and uh, uh, my interest is that uh, since I use these uh, uh, electric hub motors on, uh, you know, bicycle rims, and uh, uh, they're a lot of fun. There's different styles of e-bike uh, uh, powered uh, uh, motors, but uh, I use a couple in... Uh, laced into the wheel. For me, it, they work well with the planetary gears and uh, all that, but uh, what often happens with uh, uh, that style and probably all other e-bikes is uh, the spoked wheels themselves, the, the spokes will break quite often. And if you have the kind of uh, hub motor that's laced into the wheel that means the hub takes up more space that means the uh, spokes are usually a non-standard size so oftentimes they're hard to get and if they're breaking often and they do for me uh, you know even before it's time to change the tire due to wear uh, you know I'll be changing the spokes beforehand and I'd, I'd rather not do that so much but uh, there seems to be no other way around it, at least with these uh, two millimeter size round spokes that uh, uh, are what's available and what's uh, what I'm using. And uh, thank goodness there's uh, one place online called uh, WheelBuilder.com that uh, you know allows you to uh, you know effectively and quickly uh, order up custom uh, size uh, spokes, and that's what I've been doing. But uh, here in a pinch, uh, you know, I had a few extra spokes and uh, I was changing a tire out and four, four or five spokes had, had broken. I, I didn't realize that, but I was changing the tire anyway, so, you know, I shimmied over and got my little box out and, oh man, I got four or five spokes. That's, you know, I was thinking, oh boy, time to order more spokes. But, you know, I've got a lot of other spokes and, uh, you know, it occurred to me, and maybe it's never been done in all of human history, at least with bike uh, spokes, that uh, if you've got a longer spoke, you may be able to make a custom uh, length spoke that's shorter pretty easily. If you if you have a welder, uh, I'm thinking it's going to be quite easy to take uh, two spokes. This is uh, the uh, custom ones that I've ordered in the past and try to keep a, a handy supply of, uh, but uh, just... Uh, button them up to each other and then bending the taller one over out this way clipping it and then just uh, putting a little bead on the end uh, you know burning it. I've got a TIG welder back here and I, I'm sure I could make a, a handy little uh, nub right on the end of uh, where I uh, bend it and where I uh, uh, put a little uh, bead on the end and I think maybe I'll even uh, use some uh, stainless uh, filler to put that bead there maybe even put it on the turn a little bit the radius there because the spokes you know they all always uh, tend to bend at the or break at the bend there so maybe a little bit of uh, a stainless uh, will kind of shore that up uh, strength wise so you know I, I'm just curious uh, how easy it will go I'm sure it will it's possible and it'll be fairly easy but uh, in the long run how uh, you know if it might tend to build up and, and help those spokes because that's where they they break especially with these e-bikes they've got they've got torquey motors and, and they just break more and uh, I'm considering also uh, installing some uh, disc brakes rather than the uh, V-brakes. Now the V-brakes I've always thought were better uh, in in a sense in that they they don't transmit any of the uh, uh, braking tension through the spokes but if I go to the uh, uh, the disc brakes I believe it will because they'll be uh, clamping at the uh, hub and you know they got to transmit through the spokes to get to the wheel for that all that braking action to take place so I'm a little ambivalent about disc brakes, but I think I'm going to try it anyway. But uh, the spokes are an ongoing issue, so you know it's just uh, it's just something that I'm going to do. Okay, now here's the original uh, end, and it appears that this is not a full 90 degrees, and so that's what I did. Also, I bent the uh, longer one 
at not a full 90 degrees. You can see it kind of ramps up uh, before it hit the 90 degrees. And I just used a little mini vise, put it in there and pulled it around. And, and sure enough, I got an angle that uh, seems right. Okay, now you can see where I've cut it. I've cut this uh, and left a little, little more uh, uh, base metal on there because I'm thinking I'll, uh, I'll burn back a little bit with the torch first a TIG torch, the TIG electrode. It's not really a torch, but it's called a torch. But I'll burn back the base metal to, to start to build up that nub there. And then when it burns back, I'll see how close it is to, to this size of a nub. And uh, I'm thinking it'll be less than, than uh, this will be. And that's when I'll come in and put a little dab of stainless on top of that. And maybe uh, crawl back along the back side of the, the radius there to give a little bit of stainless uh, uh, strength uh, added to it. So that's the plan. Okay, and there it is in this uh, little vise, and I, I left it shallow enough so I could see how, how the turn was, how much height I have to deal with, and there's one that uh, represents the ideal amount. So, uh, you know, I know how much uh, I can burn down without exceeding the uh, the best length. Okay, here we go. We're getting ready to uh, just do a little burn down. No filler yet. I just want to see how it responds. Okay, that's pretty good. At that amount of length left on, just using the torch almost gets you, you know, what you want. You see, that's pretty close already. It's pretty close. As a matter of fact, that would probably hold in the uh, hole through the, uh, the hub uh, flange there. You know, I could probably put this baby in right now and call it done. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm actually kind of tempted, but uh, I think I will. I think I'll put a little, uh, a little nub uh, of uh, stainless at that point there and follow through with what I was saying. But in a pinch, anybody could do this, and this would be good enough. I mean, you know, I, you may have to have a TIG welder because that's non autogenous that uh, won't add filler. If you try to use a stick welder or a MIG welder, you might get lucky, but you know, you'd end up with a big blob on there, and uh, you know, that could be dealt with too. You can dremel it or file it down to, to get something like that, but uh, you know, there's ways. So, uh, or even a torch, I mean, I suppose an acetylene torch you could probably do as much, but yeah. I, I'm happy. I'm happy. I, I like it. So I'm going to see if I can improve even on that. And uh, but I might uh, put it a little deeper in the vise, so you know the vise acts as a heat sink, so this uh, nub, this existing nub, won't proceed down anymore. Now I suppose I could have left a little more length at the cut, and that way this. Uh, nub uh, would be, you know, even better, but, uh, you know, live and learn, that's my first guess, uh, and, you know, I think it was marginally uh, close enough, but uh, I, I had this plan of using this uh, uh, stainless uh, filler rod, so I'm going to keep following through with that. Okay, that's very low amps. You can see, see I was fluttering around, uh, I don't know, six or seven amps there for a second. But uh, I did, I, I put some uh, stainless uh, filler on top of there and I've got a bigger ball now and uh, it's not the ideal shape, but uh, it might be, uh, that might be quite fine. I suppose I could dremel off the top of it to make it look a little flatter like the uh, 
like the factory one, but uh, still, still, this this will work. So I'm thinking I, I'm going to keep going with my original plan, but I don't know if I make this too much larger, it might not go through that hole. So you know what? I just might stick with that and knock off the top of the bead and call it a victory. Okay, so I just uh, took the uh, spoke right over to that uh, belt grinder over there and, uh, uh, you know, it, it was easy to get the uh, other one to approximate, uh, you know, the look of uh, the standard factory ones or, you know, the real ones. So, yeah, it's uh, it, it was quite easy and... Uh, you know, uh, hopefully it'll be helpful to somebody. I I'm sure it will because uh, spokes are, are sometimes a hassle, you know. Uh, you know, it's not that they're that costly. It's that uh, sometimes they're hard to get a hold of, uh, especially in a pinch when you, you discover some that uh, are broken. And, oh, you know, gee, I, what am I going to wait to put on the tire or, you know, keep the thing uh, in limbo until I get new spokes. No, you don't want to do that. So, you know, in a pinch, this uh, this is how easy it is. And, you know, I'm surprised at how easy it is. It's just, uh, you know, I didn't even need to do any of that extra dabbing. Just just burning that back with a TIG torch uh, uh, gives you a, a pretty good nub that approximates it right off the bat. But if you want to follow up and, you know, do a little more, you can. But uh, Quite easy. Okay? Thanks.